Every investigation has limitations. Limitations include things that you couldn't control perfectly, even if you tried, and uncertainties that prevent you from being able to generalize the conclusion further. Let's look at some examples. In this investigation, we were asking, how does number of coils affect electromagnet strength? We use the number of pins picked up by an electromagnet as an indicator of its strength. Here's a problem, because you can only get pins in whole numbers. So you don't get half pins or quarter pins. And so you lose some precision in the data because of that. So say maybe one of the electromagnets, it should actually be able to pick up maybe 3,729 pins. That's how much strength it has. But instead, it will only be able to pick up three pins because you can't get 0,739 or whatever pins. And so you will get an idea of that electromagnet as being weaker than it really is. And then another limitation is that not all pins have the same mass as one another. So you might look at two electromagnets and perhaps really they have the same strength as one another. But one is picking up two pins and the other only one. But it's just because the one who's picking up only one pin is picking up a heavier pin than the one that's picking up two pins. Those pins maybe are lighter. So those are limitations in this investigation. What limitations can you think of in the investigation where we looked at the effect of amount of wind on evaporation rate? Remember, we put petri dishes at various distances from the fan, and that indicated to us the amount of wind. The closer ones had more wind, the further ones less wind. We first put 10 milliliters of water into each Petri dish, left it for about two hours or something, and then calculated the change in water volume. In other words, how much water evaporated. What limitations are there in this investigation? Well, you might have other sources of wind that you haven't thought about. Maybe you put this up in your classroom and one end has a door or a window which you didn't think of closing. Or even if you did close them, perhaps some wind can get in under the door. Then the amount of wind is not only determined by the distance from the fan. There's another interfering variable that you haven't controlled for. Then you might have a case where one part of the room is warmer than another part. And now you've got another variable that's affecting evaporation besides just amount of wind. And it's affecting it differently for the different treatments, which is now not a fair test. Another problem is that your fan might actually blow over the first set of Petri dishes because they maybe aren't in the line of the wind. Another limitation with this investigation is that the indicator and the variable for amount of wind are not directly related to one another. What do I mean by that? Now you must realize, of course, the distance from fan is related inversely to amount of wind. It's not inverse proportion, but there's some kind of inverse relationship. In other words, the closer to the fan, the more wind. So one might think, Okay, here we have inverse proportion between distance from fan and change in water volume. And so that shows direct proportion between amount of wind and evaporation rate. But that's not so. Distance from fan doesn't correspond directly to amount of wind. Because if you double the distance from the fan, you aren't halving the amount of wind. Because amount of wind actually decreases by the square of distance. And so there isn't a perfect correlation between the indicator and the variable itself. So even if we would have inverse proportion in the data, we could then conclude change in water volume is inversely proportional to distance from fan. But that's not so much use because that's not very general. We're not really interested in how the change of water volume compares to the distance from fan. We want to know the more general issue of high evaporation rate links to amount of wind. So this illustrates one kind of limitation where the indicator of a variable doesn't have have a direct correspondence and so you can't from the data patterns you see conclude what the mathematical relationship is between the two general variables that you're really trying to investigate.